Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. I'm tackling a slightly different video this week but it's a topic that I see come up time and time again on posts regarding miniatures. And that topic is tools. So I want to look at a few of the tools that I use all the time and talk about things that you might find useful if you are just starting to make miniatures and even you might find useful if you've been making miniatures a while and um, you're looking for new ways to do things so let's get started i'm going to begin with something that you see a lot and this is my craft mat now craft mat is not a necessity but it is advantageous. I use one because I was a paper crafter for many years and I got one on my desk anyway but I use it because it makes cutting easier. My table underneath this is a glass top which is great but you try and cut anything on there and things slip and slide. This is what is supposed to be a self-healing mat. This is a big mat. This is um, A2 size here in the UK, which is, according to the mat, 60 by 45 centimetres. So that's like two feet by 18 inches, which is a good size. It's certainly big enough for pretty much everything. I want to cut um, for miniatures. It's not a big enough area to work on because I still end up with stuff over the other section of the desk, behind me, alongside me, everywhere there's stuff, but that is another story. These will help um, preserve your blades a bit longer because sharp blades are important, but we'll get to that in a while. And obviously you don't need one as big as this. I've got others that are little sort of small ones, which are big enough for most miniature things. But this protects my table and um, it's really quite useful. I do find um, the only time that I want to protect this even more is if I'm using something hot. So I've got a mat that I use um, for putting my glue gun on, for using my heat tool on and that's a glass mat, it's actually a glass table mat that I um, borrowed from elsewhere in the house. But I've also got a wooden board that I use when I use my craft iron which you may have seen in at least one of my videos. Again that's something that I just um, borrowed from elsewhere in the house and um, haven't put back. Nobody said anything, nobody's noticed, so it's mine now. You might find that with making miniatures there is a lot of um, measuring involved. There is. If you want to be strictly accurate to scale there's a hell of a lot of measuring involved. There's a lot of working out you will be doing the maths all the time. Anyway, even if you're not obsessed with exacting scale, you're going to need to do some measuring to make sure that things are square or rectangular, or even just to make sure that all your legs are the same length, because there is nothing worse than making something and finding out that you've got one leg that's shorter than the other three. And then you've either got to replace that one leg or you've got to, um, reduce the height of the other three. So what I've got here are actually um, the rulers that I use most often. As you can see I've got quite a collection. Now I've got this one which dates back to my um, paper crafting days which being clear and having um, quarter inch marks on there is really good if I want to cut a lot of the same thing. I use this quite a bit. I've actually got another one of these which is newer and isn't quite so worn. 
This is your sort of standard metal rule. This one has got a non-slip backing, which is great because again, when you're trying to cut or even just draw a line, it doesn't go anywhere. And this is um, measured in centimetres and inches. Being in the UK, although technically we are a metric country, inches are still everywhere. And so it is still quite common to get the two on one. This one is my little baby one. And this has got millimetres and inches. Now, this has got um, the device, it's divided up obviously, it's got half millimetre um, measurements on the one side, which is ridiculous. But then on the other side, I've got twentieths of an inch, fiftieths of an inch, tenths of an inch, none of those I've ever used. And then the more common, sixteenth, thirty seconds and sixty fourths. I tend to use this one for measuring, not for cutting or anything like that. I will get this one in places and measure things and see how big my gap is and that kind of thing. And then from my little one, I've got the extreme of my big metal ruler. This one is 60 centimetres, 24 inches, a good two, fit, two foot um, rule. And It's really handy if you're dealing with something that is um, bigger. So when I'm cutting my um, templates for my room, um, for my rooms, for the floors, this is great because most of the others aren't much longer than a foot, 30 centimetres, and um, sometimes you need a bit of overhang to be able to get a good line. I would recommend that you get yourself a good ruler um, doesn't have to cost a lot, but it is really, really useful. As I say, it can s save you so much time and effort if you just measure things accurately. I mean, obviously, if you don't mind having one leg shorter than everything else, you know, you can carry on, but these really do make a difference. Next up are cutting implements. Now, if you're going to work in card, even some thicker cardboards, that kind of thing, and you are able to cut a straight line with a pair of scissors, that's all you need. You know, if you can do that, fair play to you because I am definitely in that, pe in that category that even if I've got a line to follow, I can't cut it straight with a pair of scissors. Now, scissors obviously come in all shapes and sizes. Um, all I will say is, if you're going to be using a variety of materials for your miniatures, you need at least two pairs. That is one for paper and card. Although I think I've got these the wrong way around. I think those are the ones I've been using for fabric. And another pair for fabric because paper, card, blunts your scissors really, really quickly and fabric needs sharp, sharp blades. But, you know, that is enough. Otherwise, to use with a metal rule, you need a craft knife. Now, I've got two different sorts here. This is just the bog standard sort of basic scalpel knife that you can pick up from the craft departments of what I'll call cheaper stores. They quite often have this sort of thing in. And then you've got the more um, robust kind. This one I've had for many years. They've both got replaceable blades and um, that's what you do. You replace the blade, you need a nice sharp blade for getting accurate cuts. They do both have safety covers for the blades. They're just not on them at the moment because it allows you to see what it is a bit easier. Um, obviously you can get um, all the kinds of craft knives. You can get what we in this country call a Stanley knife, which again has a removable blade, but it's not a scalpel type. Um, 
and you get the ones that have the blades that you can break off sometimes called box cutter maybe there's all different ones they're all good for different things I find the scalpel type best for craft purposes but it's up to you now obviously if you're going to be working in harder materials like wood then you're going to be moving into kneading saws things like that I don't generally work in wood I do have a set of little saws somewhere but you can tell how often I use them because I'm not even sure where in the craft room they're located um, you know it is a case of what you like using a lot of people like using the um, sort of mitre cutters now the traditional mitre cutter is a mitre box which you use with a saw or you can get these that are like shears that are sometimes called an easy cutter where you can set the angle and cut them they look brilliant I've not managed to source one yet probably will at some point they certainly make cutting um, craft sticks easier but it's a case of making do with what you've got quite often you know you can spend as much as you like but at the end of the day if you want to start making miniatures all you need is a material something to cut it and something to stick it together with those three things you can start making almost anything okay you might need to alter your cutting tools your sticking materials depending upon what you're using but those three things you can generally make something so these are your basic cutting tools now I also use a paper trimmer now this is my smaller paper trimmer I this is um, only good for paper that's six inches wide but um, I have a bigger 12 inch model as well again these are things that I've got because I was a paper crafter you don't need them but they can make life easier this is one of the reasons why I can get some quite good neat cuts sometimes is because I cheat and I use this I'm not going to lie I will cut cereal box material with the bigger of these and um, that's how I make my floorboards and things like that but again you don't need it you can with care a craft knife and a ruler get the same effect you know it's just a matter of if you've got it and you can repurpose it why not following on from cutting and these are also cutting tools although a bit more specialized I've pulled out some dies and some punches now I've pulled out circles in both of these because circles are one of those things that you need to get right and it's sometimes worth investing in some punches if you're going to be doing circles in a particular size um, just to make life easier again most of these I have had because of paper crafting but I use them in my miniatures if you watch my videos you will see that I use dies for various things um, different shaped ones it makes life easier especially if you want to cut um, multiples of the same shape the circle hole punches I use all the time because it's so easy now I've got obviously if you're going to be using dies you need a die cutting machine now I've got a couple I'm not pulling either of them out one of them is a cuttle bug which is an older smaller machine um, it's no longer made but I love it I have had it many many years and um, it keeps going fingers crossed it keeps going and then I also have a big one which will take um, some quite large pieces which is brilliant I think it takes up to an A4 sheet of paper which is um, for those of you 
in America that is a little bit bigger than your letter size paper. That is our sort of standard printer size paper. It will take things up to that big, which is brilliant. Don't need it that big for miniatures, but I've got it because of the paper crafting. And it sits in the cupboard and doesn't exactly do much. So if I could use it for anything like this, I will do. So obviously you'll need those for that, but apart from that, they can be really useful. So if you've got them or you can come across one for not much money, it's worth it. If it's for shapes that you know you're going to use. Now the punches you can pick up for not a lot of money. Again, you can sometimes pick them up cheaply on like the likes of Facebook Marketplace, on um, other online sellers, or even in craft shops, you can pick them up. Some of these have only cost a few pounds. Now, I've gone for the circles because I struggle cutting circles. I'm not going to lie. I cannot cut a proper circle out with a pair of scissors to save my life. So I've got circle hole punches. Now I've got this kind, which is the sort of, um, sometimes called a ticket punch, and this makes small circles. And then I've got a mid-sized one here, and I've got my, hin my inch circle. Um, I've got a lot that I use, but these are the three sort of basic kinds you get. These ones are known as a palm punch because you can do them in your in your hand. They, they work upside down. These, you have to really use them with the back of your hands. And um, then you get some that are like that, but you have to push them down. They're a bit more awkward. Um, obviously, if you have problems with your hands, you know, you need to maybe try some out, see if you've got a friend who's got some that can, they can lend you. And you can see what you can use, what will work for you. Because, you know, there's nothing worse than having a tool that you can't use. But as I say, these are a sort of um, next step up. You don't need them, but they can make life easier. You'll find that a lot of the tools I use, um, you can live without them, but if you've already got them um, or you can find them at a price that is not objectionable, they can make life a lot easier. Following on from cutting to sticking. Now, there are so many different glues you can use and whether they will work for you depends on the materials that you're using. My favorite, is my Cosmic Shimmer um, Specialist Acrylic Glue. Now this is something that I got into using because of Papercraft. And I find it works for pretty much most things that I want to stick. It is really good glue. It dries clear and I can paint over it, which is always a bonus. And it goes a long way. Now I apply it with a piece of cardboard and a toothpick simply because I find it easier to control than the actual bottle. But, you know, this is up to you. A lot of people find that using a, um, a toothpick or something to apply the glue means they can get it exactly where they need it. That is brilliant. But this is my personal favourite. Now, this one is good old white PVA glue, sometimes referred to as school glue or just white glue. This is, well, this is a bot. the bottle is the stuff that's child safe. It's the stuff that they would use at school when they're making pretty much anything. That's not actually what's in there. It is PVA glue in there, but I've reused the bottle because I've got a big um, five litre container of glue. That which is what happens when you say to your husband, I need some more PVA glue. OK, I'll get you some. So he did. He bought me five litres. That's pretty much a gallon, a gallon of white glue. 
and yeah I've been using it for quite a while I refill this every so often and um, off we go this I tend to use for things where I want the um, the project to get wetter so I will use this sometimes if I want to shape fabric that sort of thing it takes longer to dry than my cosmic shimmer which actually goes quite tacky because a lot of people like tacky glue um, if you leave it out on a piece of card it will go tacky and then you can use it in a different way but this this is good old-fashioned PVA it's great for lots of things and um, it's not that expensive either then we've got wood glue I've got Gorilla wood glue it is pretty good I haven't had a problem with it um, being wood glue it does need um, a longer drying time I tend to if I'm going to use this I will use it on things and I will leave it overnight but also you need to hold things in place because it doesn't cling as quickly as some of the others um, also I've pulled out the good old glue stick this is a um, branded one others are available you know you can get a glue stick from pretty much anywhere school supplies um, craft stores they all have glue sticks it does have its uses especially if you're trying to cover a large area and then I've got my what I consider my fabric specific glue which is an iTac glue I don't use this very often to be fair Yes, I use the Cosmic Shimmer, but I like to keep it by me um, just because it is useful. I will sometimes use this for, yes, emming fabric. I can actually use the Cosmic Shimmer as well, but I will sometimes use it for that. I think that's what I originally got it for. Now, obviously, you've also got Ock Glue. I don't use hot glue very often for making miniatures because it can be a bit problematic. It tends to go everywhere. You know, you get all the strings. And if you're in a climate where you get some really hot weather, the glue can melt again. Some people like using it as a temporary sort of weld in place while the actual proper glue um, cures. That's great. If that works for you. That works for you. You know, I'm very much a believer that you should find what works for you and your making style. Obviously, this isn't all the glues. I'm sure this isn't all the glues I've got. No, looking down there, I can see some decoupage glue and some other tacky glue. And um, yeah, I've tried them all. Now, the other things that I use is Mod Podge. Now this is the gloss because my mat is a much bigger tub but this is one that you can use as a sealer as a glue and as a finish i tend to use it as a finish um, also that can be used as a finish i've got glossy accents now this is a dimensional medium you can stick things on with this it will um, stick for instance metal embellishments to things but now I just use it as a, um, a finish and the other one that I haven't actually pulled out that I've just thought about is UV resin now at the moment I'm only just getting into using UV resin for bigger things but I have used it before now as a glue because generally, if nothing else will work, the UV resin will. And um, it can be helpful if you've got that project that is really, really driving you up the wall. I, I'm not going to comment on epoxy resins because I've not used them, at least not for miniature product projects. And the only other thing I use is I use tape occasionally. I use the extra sticky double-sided tape because it is really good. 
and if I cover it with the glue stick I can move it around when I, I can move what I'm sticking onto something around and get it lined up properly that's why I use it because it does stick and it stays stuck for a very long time that's the entire purpose of it but yeah as I say lots of things for sticking things important to check that what you want to use will work with your materials even if that means um, trying to stick you know test pieces together before you make your actual miniature because there's nothing worse than trying to stick something together and it's not having any of it been there done that you know I'm speaking from experience here it might not always seem like it from my videos because I do try and do the um, going through it quite um, straightforward this is how it works this is how it works it doesn't always work and um, those are generally the ones that um, I'd have the outtakes that are not suitable for work because my language isn't which is why they get deleted because yeah I'm sure you can all imagine it is really frustrating so I recommend that whenever using a new glue try it on something that doesn't matter first but the same material that you want to make your proper piece out of. So other tools that you might find useful with miniatures. A good pencil. A good pencil that is sharp. You will always need to mark things. As I say, if only to make sure that all your legs are the same length. I just recommend that you have a pencil and you keep it for craft purposes. Mark it in some way tie something to it so that um, nobody can walk off with it because in this house if they can walk off with it they will but I normally have a big pencil topper on this that I've taken off just for the um, video but a pencil um, obviously if you're going to paint things varnish them you need paint brushes You don't need really expensive paint brushes, but I do recommend that if you're wanting to paint small details, you buy some decent small brushes. Um, the finer the brush, the more likely they are to be absolutely rubbish if you rely on cheap ones. But for painting bigger areas, cheaper brushes work great. With these, a paint palette. You don't need a paint palette though, you can use a piece of thick card. It will work, you can throw it away. You know, these brushes have all been picked up from cheaper shops. Um, I normally buy a pack that costs me about two to three pounds and I get about 15 paint brushes in them. Different qualities, different things. Some of them are tougher like this. Some of them are nice and soft. And then that one is one from a slightly more expensive set, but still a cheap set. Not expensive brushes. I've had expensive brushes. I've got one expensive brush at the moment, which cost me about five pounds for one brush, which was a good many years ago. I don't use it. I'm too scared to. And that is not expensive as paint brushes goes, but paint brushes definitely. Also, paint brushes are great for clearing um, bits of things. Using as a use a nice soft one as a um, cleanup brush. I swear by my paper piercer. This is a um, paper craft tool. You can get tools similar for woodworking i think they're called halls it is basically it is like a really strong metal pin with a really sharp point that you can make holes in things again they can be picked up reasonably priced you know or there might be one knocking about somewhere at home from somebody's endeavors in woodworking if they don't know you're going to take it and they're not using it Hey, is it going to hurt anybody? Probably not. 
I also like using ball tool tools for embossing things. Now I do actually have a set that were proper embossing tools that I bought while I was paper crafting. This isn't one of them. This is actually from a set from the pound shop that was designed for nail art for putting those little dots of designs on your nails with nail varnish. It works. It does what I need it to do. I just use it in conjunction with an eraser, put my paper flower for instance on the eraser, rub over it and it shapes it. Another useful one is sandpaper. This isn't sandpaper. There is some in this room somewhere. I can't currently find it. But this is the next best thing and this is a cheap nail file sometimes called an emery board in the UK. Um, they can tend to be a bit rough for your actual nails. I wouldn't want to do acrylic nails on some of these to be fair. This one's not too bad, but I've got others that are really, really rough. But they are great for taking the edges off of things. Um, even with cardboard, they'll take the edge off and give you a nice smoother edge. Just a useful little tool to have about. And we've got my toothpicks. Or in the case of this set, I keep thinking that it's a certain Adam's family member. When it sat on my desk, it looks like it could be cousin it. Toothpicks are great for applying glue, for removing excess glue, for just putting something small into place where you can't quite get your fingers, toothpicks are great. So they're a good tool to have when you're making miniatures. And of course, there's tweezers. Now, I use my tweezers so much more since I've started working in 148th scale or quarter scale. But even in 112th scale, they are great for positioning those small pieces getting those details where you want them. Now I cannot for the life of me remember what these are called but these are the ones that you have to squeeze to open which means that if you pick something up it stays. I can put that down and that is still firmly gripped. They're great. I would most definitely recommend these to all miniaturists. It's not an expensive tool necessarily, but it is a really, really useful um, thing to have because you can guarantee you are going to need more than two hands. And if you've got this that can hold something like this, it can make all the difference. Actually, if I'm going to hold something like that, I'm more likely to use a pair of clothes pegs because if I hold it with two at different angles it will stand up. If I get it right it will stand up. It just keeps something upright for drying. They're brilliant. I also like clothes pegs, clothes pins sometimes some of you will call them, for miniature clamps. Um, you can get miniature clamps, but they can be quite expensive. These can be fairly cost effective or you might have them if you've got an outside drying space yourself. You might just be able to go and um, borrow a few from there. This is one of those tools that is um, very much a using what you've got. It's a bit like my real secret weapon, the bricks. You can buy um, drying rigs, jigs, that's what they're called, it's a, a jig. You can buy a, a metallic jig that is a metal tray with magnets. You can make your own using a baking sheet and magnets that you can buy online. Or you can go in the kids toy box and you can um, relieve them of a few of these bricks. And then I can use this to dry, thing, to dry things, to hold things at 90 degree angle while they dry. 
I can change these round so they're different shapes. I can turn it into a U shape if I want to, whatever. I can do it because they're constantly um, rebuildable. Does the kid know I've got them? No. Am I repentant? No. They were left lying about. They're mine now. These aren't actually um, Lego brand. These are... Um, oh, actually, no, one of them is Lego. Oh, dear. These are mostly cheaper ones, but they do the job. They let me get my pieces dried how I want them. And at the end of the day, that's what we need. We need tools that aren't going to break the bank, but will let us build things. And that's also why I use one of these. This is a sheet designed to go on your um, baking sheet. It is non-stick and I use it for gluing and painting on. Um, this is actually less than half of one because I've got it put into two pieces. I've got a bigger piece and a smaller piece. It just means that when I'm messing with wet glue and paint and that, I can put this on here and then this will clean up. Again, this is something that I picked up from pound shops and it is well worth a pound, maybe a couple of pounds now, the way prices have gone up, but it makes life so much easier. And it's a damn sight cheaper than the craft sheets you can buy that are in um, double figures for a non-stick sheet. So, I know I haven't covered all tools. I haven't covered most um, electronic tools. I haven't covered the likes of the Dremels and the lookalikes. I have a fake Dremel. I'm not going, this isn't a fake Dremel. It is a multi-tool like a Dremel, just not branded. I don't use it very often. I use it occasionally for drilling holes in things. That seems to be about my limit. Will I use it more? Possibly, but I haven't as of yet. Um, beyond that, that is about as complicated as my tools get. You know, I know you can get little mini saws and little mini lathes and things like that, but I figure I want to, that I wanted to talk about tools that anybody could use without it costing them a fortune. As I say, to make miniatures, you need a suitable material, something to cut it and something to stick it. And then potentially you need something to finish it. So you're going to need some paint. You know, craft paint doesn't have to cost a lot. Some of the cheaper stuff isn't very good because it's not highly pigmented, but you can get it for not a lot of money. And um, yeah, there we have it. A sort of um, quick look through tools for the miniaturist. If you've liked this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Most of the time I actually make things. This one is unusual because I'm just sort of giving my opinions on tools. But as I said at the start, it's a question that I see asked a lot is what tools do I need to make miniatures? Well, I'll be honest, what tools do you need to make miniatures? These ones. The best tools we've got are hands. You know, everything else is an advantage. You can do a lot with very little. And that's what I like. I like to do a lot with very little. So, until next time, bye.